Y'all, so we back again, man. It's your boy DJ Cliff. We are uh, back here with another episode of DJ Cliff Presents. Um, shout out to everybody who's been tuning in to the podcast and all the feedback we've had. It's been it's been really dope. Once again, remember you can check out um, past episodes on the website djcliff.com. DJ K L Y P H. Uh, we're also on iTunes. Just search for DJ Cliff. We're on SoundCloud. We're all over the all over the place. And um, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty stoked because I have an opportunity to connect with someone that I've actually known for quite a while. One of the first artists that I had a chance to connect with really here in Portland when I started, um, you know, just the the process of building with local artists. First time we met. We chopped it up for a quick minute, and then he had to go out and 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 ball. You probably, I don't even know if you remember that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the homie Tote. What's up, cat? What up? What up? What up? Man, thanks for uh, thanks for taking a minute because you're right in the middle of some busyness right now, Man, bro. Yeah, you came through. Scale <laughs> <laughs> penciled you in. Exactly. <laughs> I, I felt bad about last time. I wanted to come through, and then I had to dip out to seattle real quick yeah yeah now that's but that's understandable man that's that's kind of your life right now yeah it really is lately it's been very go 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 <laughs> been driving a whole lot um so it's probably like people who are connected to what i have an opportunity to do it's probably hard to imagine that they don't know who you are but uh right quick man let people know who you are uh taupe producer rapper from portland oregon um Started in about 2007 with a group called Living Proof. Um, Put out my first solo record, 2009. Uh, After that, a group called T&E. We got a couple records. uh, Most recently, Verse Portland, we put out earlier on the top of this year. And uh, getting ready to put out my brand new project, Broke Boy Syndrome. I always mess up the same <laughs> broke boy syndrome. It's kind of a kind of a tongue twi- twister. No doubt. No doubt. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, getting ready to drop this new project here, December fifteenth. Excuse my voice. I'm kind of under the weather right now, That's fighting off this cold. It's, look, man, it's that time of year, you know. It is. It um, is. Yeah, the 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 uh, the stuff that you've sort of shared with folks so far, um, su- surrounding broke boy syndrome, I think is really dope. I know you rocking the. You rocking the, the 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 gear right now? The logo, yeah. The logo is dope. Thank man. you. Shout out to my man, um, Caso De Niro, Alexander oh, Wright. He's been doing a lot of dope graphic work for the whole scene, but he came through major with the logo and yeah. a lot of the um, the album design, CD design. Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely shout out Caso, man. He's done he's done my stuff. He did the Welcome to the Neighborhood logo. He did the DJ Cliff Presents logo. That he's this ain't no commercial, but I'm telling you if you need some work done, real talk. That's that's I that's think that's how I saw his stuff was from yours. Oh, that's what's up. Somebody, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. Do the grapevine. He's worked with he like you say he's worked with a, with a lot of people here in yeah. the area. Yeah. Good um, cat. Man, there's so much stuff to get into. Um so much stuff to get into. But let's do this, man. Um let's let's kind of start with um it's kind of just a question that I had about the the latest project, and then um, all of the work, all of the the producers that you've been working with on this project. How did you how did you make the choice to record a project that you didn't that you didn't one hundred percent produce? I think coming off the heels of, of Trouble Man, yeah, because that was all produced by myself and um, had like a real certain vibe to it. So I wanted to just do something different, you know, like never really repeat and do the same thing. Like I was thinking kind of like that that could be my option. I could just continue to make my own projects because people do appreciate that. And people do tend to like um, me rapping on my own beats and then in turn I'll sell some more of my own beats. So it works well. It's like a self-marketing type of tool. But um for me, just being an artist, I like to switch it up and, and bring diversity and cre- different creativity to the table. And um, to be honest, I was really influenced by those, uh, <laughs> it's funny to say, the Magna Carta Holy Grail commercials <laughs> where everyone was working together. I thought that was so cool with like Timberland and Swiss Beats and everyone working on the same song and everything. So initially that's the inv- that's the atmosphere i wanted to create for this for this project i wanted to have three producers <clears throat> kind of collaborate over and and you know work on each other's strengths um which i was you know shooting a little bit too high <laughs> it didn't exactly work out but um 
that was the initial idea and and i just wanted to kind of bring something in-house the how to feel of one team but was diverse and played on different people's strengths and and initially i was thinking about even producing some stuff on it myself but it just didn't ever work out yeah. but um yeah and and i just just wanted to bring something different to the table basically yeah, yeah that's what's up yeah chopping it up with tote man the 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 concept though of putting together like after having recorded a whole project that you produced mm -hmm. and then having a project that you didn't produce on that you were and that you're recruiting or that you're working with other producers was there a difference in creating something that felt cohesive since you didn't you know since you since you weren't the one who did the production on this particular project yeah i think i think that's just kind of my natural like a and r year of like picking and choosing things that that matched but yeah. were still diverse like i think if you listen to the record it has a climb yeah. like there's definitely a switch at a certain point it gets a little bit more aggressive and more dark it starts out a little bit smoother and softer and then resolves itself towards the end and i think it was just kind of like the pieces of as we were making the songs it was like this fits here this fits here this doesn't fit here and some songs got taken out of the equation but um trial and error and just making it work I, you know i think there's a common thread in the type of beats that i want that i want to rap on or whatever and um everything was different like nothing really sounds the same there's some song, songs that have different similar elements but everything transitions real well i think on this album and it just kind of came together like you could listen to it it almost it almost sounds like it's one or two producers but there's like five different producers on this on this project yeah but still it blends and still it's like in a way kind of a themed you know a themed record that's what's up yeah um one of the things i think that that i find especially on your last two records including including broke boy syndrome is you know as you as you as you put out more material and people get to know who you are through your music mm -hmm. Um, these last two records, and I think you said it on um, on the previous one, but are pretty pretty personal. Yeah, I mean, do you do you do you view yourself that way as an artist, as an artist who um, is just open and, and sort of shares with the listeners who you are on on that personal level? I think with these two records, like they they'll always be linked together. Like Trouble Man and Broke Boy Syndrome yeah. will always be linked together, and I didn't really. <clears throat> realize that until after i made it and lately i've been describing it like trouble man was kind of a snapshot at um me being 26 27 and everything that's going on and maybe getting a little bit caught up in my own hype or whatever it is and and then also dealing with some of the the past issues being just getting old enough to talk about some of the the issues that made me do some things and when i was younger or whatever that i wasn't ready to talk about yeah. and then broke boy syndrome is even even more digging more into that story of even f further past it's like the prequel to trouble man and then hopefully where even beyond where it's where it's going you know so it's kind of like those two albums are synced together in a way and i think with my solo music is just I know that, that equation works like I can be really personal yeah. I can talk about whatever I want to talk about and maybe those have been the issues that have, I've felt have been most necessary to talk about or that people were gonna um be able to relate to the most yeah. you know like I've been finding myself like the music that really touches you that makes you feel like a writer is talking about you and so I feel like I have some issues that people have been through too you know that maybe they if they relate to they can you know it can help motivate them too as well but then on on features on t and e stuff it's it's a lot more competitive rapping when you're trying to you're rapping with someone you're out rapping someone or you're trying to say something or you know get a point across of being cool or whatever it you know whatever it may be but just my solo solo records are just more honest and more like musicianship to them like i put more thought into the production the whole like creativity and craft yeah. into it or whatever and so yeah these two records i think will always be kind of like a brother brother records like in a way be linked together no doubt no yeah doubt. all right so then i would i would be remiss if i didn't um, talk about sort of where we're at right now, even culturally, 
um, societal issues that are going on because um, you know when you talk about being making making music that's kind of personal and, mm-hmm. and kind of looking at what's going on so you know for and and folk probably know because earlier in the year we got here in Portland we got some national um, coverage of some of the issues that are going on here in Portland in terms of uh, the way that hip hop is looked at here mm-hmm. in the in the you know in in the city yeah and a loss of venues and, and opportunities for artists to to really present their art specifically it mm-hmm. seems like it was really targeted at, at hip hop and then you know you see that hip hop is um, has always traditionally been connected with with uh, you know with black culture mm-hmm. and now we see some of the other issues that are going on with you know around the country mm-hmm. um, when it comes to race relations so being a you know a white dude mm-hmm. in Portland Oregon who's actually I mean you get a lot of love for your art here in Portland yeah but how do you like how do you how do you manage that I mean here you are someone who wants to do their art in a city that doesn't embrace what you do and then also potentially looked at by other people, maybe from outside the Portland area, is like, who's this kid? It's it's interesting. It's never really like been. I've never really thought about it too much uh, until recently, until the last few months, with everything that's going around. Like I think being on social media, you're very in tune to people's raw emotions, yeah. and it's really out there. And I have a very diverse friend like i have all types of friends like all types of friends people friends that <laughs> all to everywhere yeah. as much as you could think like i don't want to get too specific but right. every spectrum you know so i hear it from both ends and um it's never really been something i've thought about culture culturally wise as like something that um is touchy like i've always just i just grew up i just liked this music yeah. It was just a way of how I expressed my music, um, expressed myself. Yeah. It was just the music I gravitated towards. I never thought about, like, stealing someone's culture or something like that. Or, you know, I've never thought about the whole, like, racial tones to it. Um, and as far as Portland, like, I've just continued to push, like, as, you know, making music and being from Portland and having that hurdle i don't know i've always just tried to be authentic and be real and like it's there's not really an act to my there's no gimmick to my act you know what i'm saying it's just i'm just trying to make good music and like let the music speak for myself like so many times people have been like well what's your story like you gotta have a story like to try and fabricate it and you know even with t and e i remember us like sitting around being like trying to think of how we can what's a creative way of telling their story and like you know sometimes i feel like my story is enough like i don't know if i'm getting too off topic of that no no question but um i don't know i think i've always just tried to be authentic be be truthful um about it but it is a very heightened time and 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 even right now with trying to promote an album with all the social things going on like i even feel guilty like um like people could look at me like I don't I'm not, I'm not involved I don't care about it because I'm so involved with my promotions or whatever like it is a very sensitive time and like I try I've really tried to like speak to a lot of people I know in my personal life of like t- you know talking to them about what's going on people that I know specifically aren't aware yeah people that aren't on social media and don't know what's going on to these of these issues and trying to educate a lot of people of like what really is going on in this world because it is there's some crazy stuff yeah going on and for me for a person like me a young person um and i'm sure for you sometimes too for everyone it makes you feel helpless like what can you really do what what can you really do like how do you change issues that are 200 300 you know how many years old are so ingrained in some people's thought process you know like i think that it starts with our generation and it is getting better and the more you educate people and talk to people and like letting people know that you can't stand for this and this is not a okay way of thinking and all of that like it it starts but sometimes i just feel hopeless like what can you really do to 
change these issues or or help make it like i don't know it's yeah. it's a tough one yeah i mean and i don't know that there i don't know that there are any easy answers and i think that um it's just having the conversations is 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 important and valuable mm-hmm. and, um the one of the when it comes to social media i think one of the horrible things about social media is, is that we get exposed to so much but i think one of the great things about social media is we get exposed to so much totally. you know and i think it's just a matter of what we choose to do you know with those with those options that we have but so speaking on you know that being true and authentic in your music and in your art mm-hmm. um from a from the standpoint of promoting a new project uh, working hard for people to 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 take a moment to really pay attention to the art Mm -hmm. how do you balance those two things i mean do you do you find that it's that it's tempting to do what everybody else is doing just to get on and not be not be true and authentic not really because i just don't like that type of music (laughs) (laughs) i just don't like it like maybe if i liked like that type of music i would it would be more tempt but i'm just like really just doesn't really appeal to me like you know i'm just it's not really i'm not really that interested in like turn up anthems and trap hi-hat like it's i mean that's cool you know like i'll i'm gonna jump on your record like I'm, you know it's fun yeah, yeah and there are joints that i like that are fun but like me for my type of music i'm just going for something different right and maybe i'm old maybe i'm an old head now i don't oh, look know at like, you. come on now. i don't know i don't know but it's 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 not like um it's frustrating yeah. oh that's for real it's frustrating yeah. because you feel like just this whole just trying to break into a certain it's it's just a very frustrating game yeah. with music and even just trying to get people to listen to your music like that's the thing i've been trying to focus on is just like just getting people to listen just fans letting people know they're appreciated yeah. letting people know that they can really help my movement by sharing just even like just sharing my music you list other people are listening to it that's that's huge for me like yeah. Every listen, I've been just trying to tell people every listen, every play, yeah. all that stuff really counts for me right now. You said something to me. We had an opportunity to um, to, to talk several months back, and you said something to me that that's really resonated with me um, about feedback that you get from people who see some of the success that you have had mm-hmm. and then um, their view on supporting you at that point yeah. speak on that man speak on that <laughs> people be like aussie 99 likes and i don't you don't need i don't need to be your hundredth or whatever you know <laughs> something like that like yeah. a lot of people um will feel like well you've already made it so you don't need my support now or whatever that type of thing or i see so many people like i feel like now is the most important time when i'm starting to get uh, more and more people looking at me whether it be on a national um, level or whatever like people I don't know what it is. They feel like they don't matter or something like that. So I've really made try to make an effort to just let fans know like we're on the same level. They really matter to me. Like their success is my success. Yeah. Like if they're like it's all we all come up together really in a way. Um but I think I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is about a thought process about people when they start to see someone doing better or, or like they feel like they're not they don't need them anymore or something like that like i think a lot of my personal friends have been that way or whatever but i've also been experiencing that recently with um blogs like i'm like here i'm putting out some of my best music with some of the biggest artists i've ever worked with and like i can't get you to post my music (laughs) but when i was just putting out little topes i was just putting out my tope songs right right you loved me yeah yeah you loved me but now i get like i have to really Thank, yo what's up guys hey um <laughs> hey right you right. know and i'm just really i don't know i really try and make an effort like because it's all just me that does everything so i really just try and make an effort let people know i really do appreciate it and it is hard like it's been hard to keep up with everyone but like it try and just let people know that it it all counts it all matters but we'll speak on that right quick because we were, <laughs> we were talking before we turned the mics on um i was laughing when i seen you post on social media like almost an apology to people for all the things but but let people know i mean that you like this is everything that they see this is this yeah. is you right yeah like, you don't I have mean, a, there's no there's no taupe team no. you got people like don't um, pop out the closet right quick no right? yeah i think there's a lot of um misconceived like a lot of preconceived notions and misconceptions about like 
me having a publicist or a manager or yeah. something like that. Like all my book, I do all my own booking. Think about how many shows I played this year. I do all my own merch designs and printing them. I do I ship every single one of my packages out. You know what I'm saying? I do all my own music as far as paying for all my own videos, all that stuff. Like I drive myself to you know out of town show. <laughs> you know, shout out to <laughs> Burbs who holds me down and drives a grip. You know, when we're out of town, but. The whole movement is really me right now with press, everything, like doing the press releases. It's really just been an in-house, in-house operation, but it's been strong. It's made me, it's made me feel like I could step into a marketing company and like step into like a, <laughs> be like, okay, I could fill a position really easy and just look at my camp, my album campaigns. Right. Like, um, I've learned a lot this year, you know, like, um, branding and hopefully next year I'm going to try and put somebody on the team and even try and take it to the next level but it's really been a one man operation even this year more than anything with yeah. um just just people uh me not working with you know a lot of people that I was working with before yeah. and um not having a publicist or not having a manager not having a label um everything you know so it's really just been one man op yeah is that is that your um, is that a goal of yours at this point in terms of label? Would you would you like to be on a label? Um, you've had the experience, and so you know what that's like. Yeah. And then you've had the experience of being <clears throat> being solo and, and having the ability to to kind of really mm -hmm. be in control of what happens and how it happens. Yeah. But is your would your desire be to be on a label at this stage? I wouldn't say I'm aiming at it. Like I think I probably could have taken my time and pitched this project to a couple labels and you know maybe generated some interest if i was really or oriented at that if yeah. the if the right situation approached itself like yeah of course i would love some help yeah. i love some money to do some cool things like i would love to have a budget to shoot a video with like imagine mm -hmm. the cool ass video we could shoot with a budget you know yeah. so um but i'm not like that's not on my radar like my radar has been before this album was blogs and now my radar is fans and touring yeah and um you know maybe then after that like we'll see i'm just trying to keep knocking out my list my checklist of things so it's funny being here being here in, at the spot i uh i had a chance to take a peek at at the grease board and this was probably i don't even remember which project it was it wasn't broke boy syndrome it was a project and i don't even know if it was tr it might have been trouble man right that you actually took a you posted a photo yeah of the board and i thought man that's is. that's so that's so cool that you the way that you sort of work out your process of of a, of a project mm -hmm. um is that something you've always done or something you picked up along the way i think something i picked up recently like i think just putting it down and like looking at it every day and realizing like especially when you're make when you start to make an album it's such a daunting process yeah of like when you finish one and you're like okay man I just got it done and then you st and then you start like what am I gonna do next and it's really this ground zero thing of like I'm starting from it's just all it's just ideas so I think there's like kind of a science of like putting it down and looking even if I'm just even if I didn't do anything which that doesn't happen I'm usually doing something every day yeah. but even if I didn't do anything I'm looking at it and I'm saying okay I have this 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 is what I need to be doing I need to be I got this song I need to fill in this part I got to hit up this producer I got to get this track out like I'm at least reiterating those ideas and keeping it fresh but I think for me it was mainly just of like I have so much going on and like to really just remind myself like keep working and I even like little quote like quotes are big to me too like you know quotes that are um help me kind of keep stay motivated or keep my mind focused and not like focus on little stuff or just little stuff that I, I like when I see a motivational quote to jot it down and um hold on to it for a little bit so I think there's something about just kind of reiterating those ideas and looking at it that's what's up yeah chopping it up with tope um so you, you 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 talked about touring and you have you've you've done like you've done a, you've done a lot of stuff this year um some cool stuff that you that you shared with with all of us as fans in terms of opportunities that you've had um just looking at 2014 um what's been the thing that's that stood out to you the most in terms of what you've what you've been able to do um 
Besides the vinyl, which I forgot to bring, because I was trying I I was know, to get you to tag it, but it's crazy. I forgot that I even like put that out. Come on now, this year, like that happened this year. So you mean show wise, or just in general things that happened this year? Well, I think I think show wise, because I'm thinking, you know, I know you know you did the, and I don't remember the festival, but you did the festival down in Eugene. That was early this year, right? The one that when when Nas was down there. That was actually last year. Oh, was it really? Yeah, it was last okay. summer. Okay. Um, I think show wise, the whole experience of getting on the road with Gifted Gab from Black Alicious was probably the biggest thing for me this year. We had like one. It's always it's always kind of nerve wracking when you're have these dates set out with someone you've never met before because yeah. you never you know you're stuck in a car you don't know just as people you have people have different um you know personalities idios- yeah personalities idiosyncrasies some person like this one person doesn't like that you rub yourself you know especially with artists too you can rub them the wrong way gab was super cool and um we really kind of bonded a lot and he gave me a lot of game like talked a lot and um gave us a lot of advice and and i think you know a couple cities in really started to be like okay like these kids are okay they kind of know what they're doing they're kind of you know they're headed in the right direction and then at the end was like i want to see y'all do good you know like he was like (laughs) i want to see you guys do good like was like over the top you know um so just as far as experience and then me as a performer i'm i'm one of three people on this tour and i'm first every night and a, let alone dealing with the roughness of being on a tour with no budget. Um, you're getting paid a little bit of money, but you're, you don't have a hotel. So it's and you're driving yourself. So it's this this struggle of sleeping bad, drinking, eating poorly, um, driving, being stuck in the car and then having enough energy to come out. And then when you're first, it's like, OK, I have to get the party started every night. So it really I was good at it before, but now like my life just it just helped me just develop everything so much. Like the first in the first two shows, I'm like, man, Gab and Landon are just killing me out here. Like Landon, shout out to Landon Wordwell and Eugene. He's also a very dope rapper. Like both of them are amazing lyricists and different than me. Yeah. Like my style is laid back. I'm not gonna rap your ear off. Like they're both v- lyricists to the definition of it. Yeah. So I had to find a way to stick out and in in a way like steal the party. I was like, I'm not gonna be. I told Grant like after the first two shows, I'm like, I'm not gonna be out here getting out perform the whole tour. Right. And then the next night in Eugene, I like stole the whole show oh, just by interacting with people and like giving them something different something fresh like that was the best experience and then the behind the after the show experiences of hanging out with gab and him listening to my album and us you know freestyling with him and him buying beats from me and whatever like it was a crazy experience and like again it kind of gave me belief it refreshed a little bit it refreshed me on just like that there's hope and and it just kind of one of the biggest things gab told me the biggest advice he told me was to compete and be competitive yeah like it's fun to have friends in this rap thing like it's fun it's cool it, that's fun and everything but you're out here to be the best at what you're doing mm-hmm. take heads off like he was like when we used to meet people back in the day they're rapped it was like you'd be like oh you rap you rap Oh, what's up? Let's battle. It wasn't like, <laughs> let me get your Twitter and let's do a song. It was like, no, I, who's better? Right. And he's like, just compete, be competitive, like have respect and be friends, but be the be the best rapper, be the best at what you're doing. And I think I've really taken some of that advice, and and I always try and be humble about what I'm doing or my music, and I try not to be too like, I'm a bet. I never say stuff like that or whatever, but. Lately, I've been kind of like, okay, it's, it is a con- like it is a competition, and if we look at the numbers this year, if we look at what's been going on, the numbers don't lie. Like, yeah. been having a pretty big year. Yeah, yeah. One of the biggest in Portland. Yeah. Like, if we really look at it. Yeah. Like, so, but that whole experience was was crazy as a performer and just as an artist moving forward. Like, it really taught me. It really taught me a lot, and that's one of my favorite rappers of all time. That's what's up. It makes me. You know, it sort of makes me think of um, Black Alicious right now on the road, um, and I know that Jumbo and Verse are on the road with them right now. Yeah, uh, Lifesavers, and it makes me think of the Spirit and Stone 10th anniversary show, where um, 
you know, not that they're retiring at all. I know that they're working on a new project right now. Mm -hmm. But there was a little bit of a, not a passing of the torch, but embracing sort of, um, you know, you you and 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 Ep and and G sort of as a next generation yeah. to represent Portland. Yeah, which is you know, which I thought was kind of cool because I know in conversations that I've had, really with both generations, with some artists, there's a there's a there's a sense of with younger artists a sense of. Yo, you don't had your spot. You had your time. Step out and let me get mine. Yeah. And then from the older generation, it's like, no, like, come get it. Come take it right, from me. Right, right, So I think it was really cool to see that that connect. We were honored. I was honored to be a part of that for sure. Like, right. even even to open and everything. And and it was kind of, it was it wasn't you know it's hard to describe what that feeling was. But I think even for for verse like to get specific, I think verse was very welcoming and was very of course man we're glad to have y'all and jumbo is like who are these new cats i keep hearing about <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> so jumbo was yeah. like sizing us up like like i keep hearing about because some people were like some people can't i'm gonna be honest too some people came to the show and were like i'm here to see tne and who is life's like once we we said again things move quickly yeah it's 10 year you know yeah, people yeah. were like some people were like Who's lifesavers? Right, I'm right. here to see T and E. You know, like, and that's just the nat- That's just how it was. Not, I'm not saying m- mainly everyone was there to see <laughs> lifesavers, but there was a couple of people that I'm saying were like, it's a generational like, thing. What's up? Like, yeah. okay, so and so it was kind of like, okay, we better have a good show. Yeah. Like, I remember thinking that, like, we better, perf- we better have a good freaking show. Yeah, yeah. We better do our thing. Um, we, I was honored to be a part of that, and um, and they've really knocked down a lot of doors and done stuff that no one else has done still to this day um that a portland artist have done and if you look at it it's gab was really the man and and excel were really the the people that were behind their success so when i was out there too that was another thing i was thinking was like it's just weird that like this dude who put on my ogs is you know putting you know wants us to do well like hopefully you know looking out for us in the future too so it's just a weird it's a funny cycle it's funny how everything comes together i think i said it on my facebook like if i was in high school and would have known that i'm about to have a song with gab i have a song with verse i tour with gab like i have a song with blue like i what are you kidding me like i would be going crazy like i wouldn't but i would i would i don't know if i would believe it yeah yeah chopping it up with so um the new the new project is broke boy syndrome um talk about that like just even the even the title what's behind that yeah, so Broke Boy Syndrome, I think it represents a lot of things. I think there's a lot of different themes. I think in general, it's like this sense of America is like this working class where we are working most of our lives to like break even and just pay our bills. And like we, you know, most of us work 40 hours a week to afford a house or an apartment we can barely even be at. You know, we're out there on the weekends, but we're working to keep it all nice. Like, Like, everyone has these things, like, that weigh them down, whether it's bills, whether it's you got to take care of your mom, whether it's your car, you know, you got a kid, you have a drug addiction, you want to buy 10 pairs of Jordans. Like, everyone has, like, this (laughs) something that eats away at them, you know? Like, there's very – how many people in the world are 100% financially set? Yeah. Not that many. Even rich people – are like fighting this fight to stay where they're at you know so it's kind of the story about how we all fight to to make it through and we're like man i quit i I pay my rent this week okay i can't go we're not eating out we're about to eat at the house it's it's i you know in that sense it's something that everyone can relate to as far as just the economic state we're in as people as americans as you know so and then on another sense it's autobiographical it's my story about growing up poor um growing up with a single parent who was addicted to drugs growing up not knowing my dad when i did meet my dad he's even on he's even he's on drugs worse than my mom is so i think here i think like okay i'm my whole life i'm trying to meet this person and it's going to be because i'm thinking it's going to be better i'm about to meet my normal parent (laughs) i meet my parent my dad's even crazy my my dad's even worse than my mom you know what i'm saying so it's like it's this thing of growing up 
and not having a, a hope, not having a role model. And at a certain point, you decide that, well, the only person that can get me out of this situation is me. Even, even you know, like on whatever scale it may be, like you got yourself through school, you got yourself a job, you got yourself a car, you moved out, whatever it is. Like my thing was I had to get out of um, this dr- in s- this cycle of drug addicts. Like every single person in my family, like on my mom's side is addicted, you know, from my my grandpa killed himself because he was an uh, alcoholic. My mom killed herself because she was addicted to pain, prescription pain pills. I don't speak to my dad because he's an alcoholic and whatever it does, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. th- my thing was I had to break the cycle. And the thing that was my outlet to let me express these things and became the, th- the one thing that will maybe would allow me to get out why was music or the thing that I chose was music. And so to to go from this thing of um growing up in this cycle of not really seeing a lot of positive things and then to actually start to make somewhat of a success for yourself and then how do you balance that and keep it like when you start to make money and you're like well how do i not become bro how do i not end up like my parents and lose it yeah, all or how yeah. do i not fall back into that cycle and it's a it's a situation i think a lot of people deal with but it just so happens to be my story like a lot of people, I remember when I was young, um, someone said, like, a lot of people don't ever make it out of the social class that they're born into. Like, you're only as successful as your parents. Like, if your mom went to school for one year of college and dropped out, you'll probably be around that same education level. Like, it's very rare that people make something, you know, break out of the cycle that they're from. If you came from a family where you're a doctor, you lawyer, you went to school, you're probably going to go to, you're probably going to finish school. Like it's rare that you are going to mess up. So it was like, that was something that stuck with me as a kid. And I wanted to make sure that I wasn't that statistic. I wasn't falling back in that loop. And then also another part of my story is I was able to go to a Catholic high school. So in, so in my most important years of development of being a teenager of all this stuff where you're going through all these weird things internally i was also exposed to a very wealthy high school where there's i'm going to school with kids that are like oh my dad owns this my dad's a millionaire all you know kids that are like have money and then i come to, from this thing where like there's the cra like it's like you can't even imagine what's going on when i go home you know what i'm saying and i live in southeast portland in a bad neighborhood and it's all these kids from northeast portland in these big houses or whatever so it exposed me to like this weird insecurity feeling of like damn there's all these kids with the nice they got a car they got a nice clothes and north face out of the dust so it's like all these years i'm like man all these people didn't have anything that i had so then you start to like feel like you have to come then later in life when you start to get money you're like okay well okay cool i got my little car i got my thing i'm doing good like you're oh you start to overcompensate for the stuff you didn't have when you were a kid so it's also like this story of i don't know it's just my story it goes deep you know there's a lot of different um themes to it of like making something out of nothing trying to like keep it all even you know and i think a lot of people that know my story in portland have misconceptions like i've heard recently people be like well tobes went to a wealthy school went to private school and has a publicist and all this thing like tobes rich and da 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 be like man if people really knew like how hard i've worked to make this success and a lot of it has really come through my music like like really focusing on branding myself and selling myself and like making my own music as a success and like trying to keep it that way you know so it's like a it's a story basically of the ups and downs and and what a person can go through like yeah so what then what do you do to to maintain that balance because there's obviously there's got to be something that that you have to stay connected with to keep you grounded like you talk about it's, it 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 could be easy to like you say now i've got this i've been i've been exposed to this new level of success whether it be emotional financial spiritual whatever it is Mm -hmm. how do you keep yourself grounded and and don't allow yourself to get caught up i think just keeping real people around you and just always being truthful and genuine about your situation like it i have to look in the mirror you know like really look in the mirror and look at my situation and like 
have a lot of positive things going on, a lot of things that aren't aren't happening for our other artists, and then there's still a lot of holes I need to figure out and fill in, and just, I guess just being honest and genuine with yourself, like I could get caught up in a lot of the hype, and and I think at times I have, or sometimes I, I do start to focus on some of the smaller materialistic things or something like that, like I think it's a struggle too, something I internally struggle with, but um, just trying to like, be honest and and be grounded at where I'm at in my career and because because it's not all the way there you know it's like it's a success story that's like well what's gonna happen it's kind of left open open ended you know like I talk about some things that I'm like hoping that are still gonna happen on the, on the album too you know like yeah. foreshadowing as well as telling a backstory so um, just being honest keeping real people around you not um, trying to yeah, I think that circle is important around you too. Having people that are not like yes men, yes women, and just genuine people. Like I think I have a very, I don't have very many people in my circle because I have a radar for BS. I'm like, I'm not, I don't really talk to that many people because I don't really trust that many people, and not that many people work as hard as me. So there's not that many people around me that are like influencing me to do some crazy, you know, left. <laughs> stuff or whatever i don't know <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up chopping it up with tote man um so like you you, you did early but once again got to shout out verse because i know that um that he holds you down mm -hmm. constantly when you guys are when you're doing your thing on stage um, yeah we're we're getting into the the latter part of 2014 obviously um getting ready to roll into 2015 so what's on what's on deck for live performances shows that kind of thing trying to book like a little um broke boy syndrome tour whether it's you know four or five cities in the northwest that's kind of up next um i think this year it'll probably go back to um headlining some more events like this year i was opening you know trying to open trying to jump on as many mini tours like as far as getting outside of the city as i can um and this year, I think it'll probably go back to maybe focusing more on my events. And um, I'd like to try and use whatever um, spotlight I have also to try and shine on some of the artists that I like in the city as well. Like, even I have a listening party that's coming up. Um, and Blossom is going to come out and perform, like, young R&B singer. Yeah. And just little stuff like that. Like, there's a couple people in the town that, you know, if I can help try and get people's attention towards them i'd like to and i think that i mean i know a lot of people ask me behind the scenes like you know if they're not going to book me on a show they ask me who else should be on a show some stuff like that so i know i have some people's attention that that need to be listening to other people as well so that's what's um up. that's kind of the goal but yeah. we'll see well, I mean, me and Jay Z are about to do a little world tour too. But I thought after, that was on the low. I thought you were that. Oh yeah, no, I'm saying. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't know. We'll see. I would really love to like jump on somebody. I would love if someone to come invite me on to like a big tour, but that's probably, um, you know, long shot. We'll see. Look at you. Look we'll see. We'll see. Um, is there? Uh, is there? I don't know if I should. Let, the 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 vinyl thing yeah that was just dope uh -huh. you know what i mean i think anytime that i get to see any of the people that i know any of the local artists you know get their stuff on vinyl i just think that's pretty dope you know it's crazy today was the very first day i've i listened to it on vinyl is that right it's weird i don't know because i was um we were shooting a video at my house earlier and we were kind of messing around doing a shot <clears throat> and i had listened to the test pressings but I had never actually listened to the vinyl, and I kind of just took it out and played it, and then we ended up playing through the whole thing. But that yeah. today, it was the first day I ever actually listened to it. When you when you put that out, what what, what sort of or did you get did you get feedback from people like wow like like not not just like you know blowing smoke, but I mean, what kind of feedback did you get from the fact that you put you know you were you were able to put something out on vinyl? Um, people were really impressed. A lot of people don't know what it is. A lot of people. I always tell people it's a calendar <laughs> of me wearing different printed shirts like on the cover and people actually that's believe horrible. me they're like what that is that horrible that's like, so cause it's like the same size as a calendar too <laughs> um most people are just confused they're like what's you have vinyl like a lot of people are just confused 
people think it's cool though like um a lot of people are just kind of confused by it yeah yeah. but for me like it kind of cemented that record like more than just having it on the internet more than having it on cd i just felt like it's something that you know years down the line hopefully even some kid will just see and be like what this looks cool like even just see the cover and be like what is this yeah. or it'll be like a dollar you know a dollar bin oh, album who knows <laughs> <laughs> either way but it just kind of cemented it to me like man this is forever gonna be in circulation like it was a pretty crazy feeling like to look at it but shout out to my man uh sarah murphy who helped me um press that okay. um i wouldn't have been able to do it without him so that was big but um it was a very cool experience. Everyone's it, it makes people expect you that I'm gonna do it with every project now. Everyone's like, "What's up with the?" I put, right, a, right, I right. put up the pictures of the CDs, and everyone's like, well, "What's up with the vinyl, though?" I'm like, <laughs> "What's up? You never bought Trouble Man, though." Right, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, and it was dope because I know you posted a picture recently of um, of the CDs that had come in, and and like you said, I mean, that's all. That's all. You are Man. the top team at this. Yeah, at this, yeah, at this it's. Point. Yeah, it's all me paying. I've been like thankful I've been able to knock everything out and pay for it. And that was the kind of the goal for this. Even more so, I wanted to have all this planned out even more than it is now. But that was kind of the goal with this this campaign, this album, was to have just things organized and have them done before it was. So it wasn't like I'm putting out my album and then two months later I'm about to have some CDs. Then I'm going to have some shirts. Like I have three i have four items of broke boy syndrome merch ready a a long sleeve shirt a short sleeve shirt a sweatshirt and a cd like what's up you know (laughs) uh so man it's been a it's been a blessing that music has helped me pay for that i've been playing so many shows and i haven't played any free shows i've been doing a lot of verses i haven't been doing hardly any free verses i sold a lot of beats this year i sold a lot of champagne for sweatshirts you know what i'm saying like so i really just focused this year on selling myself like i don't know when it clicked for me but i was like taupe is a brand like i think i was looking at dom kennedy or stussy or something and i just was like taupe is a brand i put it on a shirt it's a brand like i have to sell myself like that so just investing and being able to do it smartly to where i'm not losing any money i haven't lost a cent on my production like the way i do it is just it's paying for itself before it's done so it's like it's just been able a smart way of being able to invest in my own music and then allowing me to do all this other stuff like thank you know thank god like i've been able to do all this stuff like it's live shows selling verses selling merch and it's been allowing me to like create a brand in a way or or you know make it seem like it's it's really big when it's just one person one apartment one mac laptop and one gmail account <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's up. all it is that's my homie Tope right there brother thank you so much for taking a, a few minutes to, to just hang with an old man you know? <laughs> yeah man <laughs> I'm getting there too. Cassie called me an old head in the town. Wow, look at you. <laughs> Tell Broke Boy Center is a new project. Uh, let everybody know where they can go in and cop that at. Uh, it's taupe.com, iTunes, taupe.bandcamp, um, various websites, weouthere.net. Shout out to the locals. No doubt, um, no doubt. You know, get it, get it from me direct. Come pick up a CD. I might even personally deliver it to you. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Probably if you're in the Portland metro area. I don't yeah. Know if I guess if you if you fly him out to New York, he'll, he'll yeah, he'll we'll see. It for you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, brother. Yeah, uh, thanks for and, having uh, me. Congratulations on the uh, on the new material. Man. Congrats on the new on the new show, the <sighs> new the new platform. Yes, sir. Shout out to X Ray FM. All right, y'all. Uh, that's my man, Tope. Be sure to check him out. It's Tope.com. Pick up Broke Boy Syndrome and uh, and get some merch as well. Um, all right. Uh, subscribe to the podcast. Let other folk know to do the same. And uh, y'all be blessed. Peace. You. Yeah.